Hi, hi guys. This is uh, Philip Martin, and I'm here with uh, Paris, who's not going to be here long, I don't think. Uh, having technical difficulties. Um, we're if the sound quality sounds different, and I'm not saying it could sound better, it's because uh, my um, uh, interface crapped out apparently. So I'm using just this uh, USB microphone, and uh, so we don't have the well. I, you can hear what you can hear, so you can hear it fine, fine. If it's poor quality, then I apologize. We'll have it back uh, up to spec next week, I assume. Bye, Paris. Paris is leaving. Watch her walk. There she goes. There she goes. Look back, Paris. Yeah, there she is. <laughs> anyway, um, wow. Uh, it's a full swing movie week, and it's a typical mid-September movie week and that none of these uh, films are exactly highly anticipated. Um, we are going to be guessing when we put the section together this week because I don't know what the different theaters are going to open. There's a slate of films that's pretty, there, there are you know, eight possibles uh, and I think that we're going to have four of those definitely open. Um, a couple more could sneak in. I don't know. And it's sort of like there are all these small independent uh, companies, uh, production companies. We're chasing them to try to find out who they are. I've had, uh, <laughs> I guess I'm not telling anything out of school if I talk about uh, Chasing Down Infidel, which I really hope I get. Uh, it's a James Caviezel movie that's got, it was, the director has an inter interesting pedigree and he's worked with uh, Caviezel before on some things, but it's a small movie and it's, um, I, I don't know anything about production company, I don't know anything, I do know that the, uh, I had a guy send me from a PR firm send me, you know, a, a query about whether we wanted to cover it and I said, yes, we sure do, please, you know, send us the link, send us the press kit and all that. And he sent me back a note a couple of days later saying, hey, did you get it yet? And I go, no, I didn't get it. He says, okay, okay, we'll, we'll, we'll try to get it again. And a couple more days go by, and he sent me another note saying, did you get it? And I go, I didn't get it. He says, all right, we're right. You can, you can back into this and try to get the guy to send it to you. And he names the guy that's supposed to send it to me. And then he sends me another, you know, two, day, two days later after that, he sends me another thing. Did you get it? No, I haven't got it. Okay, so now it's this week. And so I'm looking at the list of movies that may may not open. We've got, you know, three of them are assigned. And uh, Infidel's still up in the air. So I, I send him a note back and I go, look, I still haven't got the press kit or the screener. <laughs> Can you help me? And he sent me the most exasperated note. I feel so bad for this man. He goes, and you can just tell this to the email. He just went, sigh. <laughs> Philip, it is out of my hands. <laughs> and he gives me the address, the email address of the guy that I, that I can contact directly who maybe can send me a link and maybe won't send me a link. And I'm thinking that maybe I'll send him a, uh, I would really like to see this movie. I'd really like to feature it in our section just because I have this kind of weird thing about James Caviezel who started, I guess he's a TV star now on Person of Interest or something. I guess he's been doing that for a long time. But, you know, I remember him when he was a young um, up-and-coming actor and he was like this strident <laughs> kind of guy and uh, sort of intimidating to talk to him. It, but but he's you know quite religious, quite convicted, and I'm surprised he hasn't made uh, any more dogmatic films than he than he has. But 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 he's made some pretty interesting films that come from a particular point of view. I mean, he is a Hollywood conservative, and I like to you know represent that part of the industry when I get a chance. You know, we do write about every movie we can get our hands on, basically. I certainly don't want to slide, slight that side of the political spectrum, but they always seem to make it so hard. I mean, it's like all these faith-based films, they don't want you to see them. They want, you know, someone else to see them, you know, someone who's perceived as friendly to them to see them. 
but they don't want the critic to see them. They don't want the guy who you know writes about them. and and part of that I understand because now I know, but part of it I can I can rationalize by saying that they probably believe that most uh, people who um, do film criticism are don't share their political, uh, cultural, uh, ethical, you know, viewpoint. What I which I think is silly, but you know that's what they think. So. And not that that matters, you know. It's sort of like I, I haven't watched Cuties, the French film yet. Uh, that's, in fact, I won't watch it because I don't really have a pressing need to watch it. I'm not that interested in it. But I do think that it's a possibility that uh, it's being misread. That this is a film that's uh, got the same viewpoint as the people who are, you know, ragging on it now. <laughs> In that I think it's probably a film about the exploitation of children and the over-sexualization of children, the sort of John Benet Ramsey sort of syndrome. But yeah, the, the young beauty pageant syndrome, uh, that sort of thing. But the people who... Uh, the, the literal mind is a vulgar thing. Let me just, just say that. So I'm probably not going to watch Cuties. I mean, but I think there's a possibility that it's being misapprehended by um, people who are really looking for a reason to shout and to, you know, give the certain message. See, Paris hasn't left us entirely because we can see her tail back here. Paris's tail. All right, but but she's listening. <laughs> Anyway, so I'm not going to, you know, probably weigh in on the cuties thing, but, you know, it's sort of like we've really lost a lot of things. And people on the right often say this, and people on the left are sometimes guilty of this, but it goes both ways, too, in that we've kind of lost our sense of humor about things. I mean, we, I mean, there's some things that aren't appropriate to joke about, and I've, you know, been horrified that uh, some of the things I've seen in social media, uh, people using, you know, corpses as beams and stuff like that. Uh, yeah, I haven't forgotten that. If the one person who I have actually um, blocked on social media, you know, used to do that all the time. He used to, you know, uh, he thought it was funny to show pictures of dead people who had families and... Uh, we're alive in the world and, and, and put a political meme on there and you know, I just don't abide that but anyway uh, but there are you know a lot of us could stand to lighten up and loosen up a little bit and there is a tendency among some people to you know take things to assign the worst possible connotation and the worst possible motives to, to people. Uh, I'm sure that the makers of Cuties uh, are horrified by <laughs> the phenomenon that they uh, portray in that film. Now, is there also an aspect of them maybe exploiting that? And, you know, it's like, it, in the, you know, it's, it's sort of like, Oh, we want to show you all these pictures of naked women so you'll know how bad pictures of naked women are or something, you know, kind of dynamic going on there. This sort of carny explo exploitative uh, mode. I don't know. Like I said, I, I, the, the problem is, is now that if I, you know, I, I mean, I think that it's a political statement just to watch the movie, and I'm not interested in making that sort of statement. So absent any, you know, reason to watch it, I've not heard that it's all that edifying, I'm probably not going to watch it. But I'm not going to not watch it because I want to cancel it. Okay? And there's a, there's a real difference there. I mean, sometimes... It's like when I wrote about United 93 years ago. And I said, uh, before I saw it, that, wow, I don't know if I want to see this because that September 11th moment was very raw to me and very hard for me, you know, to, to kind of circle back on so quickly because United 93 came out just a couple of years after the events of November, uh, September 11th. And I remember there's a local guy, I'll mention it, Bob McCord, wrote that I said that I would not see the movie 
that I was going to boycott the movie or something. It's like, no. As a matter of fact, I, I saw the movie and I reviewed it. I just said it would be hard for me to see that. And sometimes you don't have to jump in on everything that you feel like you have to jump. I mean, it's just, because, just because it's out there, it doesn't mean I have to have an opinion on it. Like, if you look at these movies that are opening this week, and it's really, I, I got to have a, I gotta have an aid because I can't really remember them. Because uh, 10 Minutes to Midnight, that's a horror film. Is it opening here? I don't think so. That's my best guess. It could, but I think it's probably going to be more likely we'll catch that on VOD or something like that. The Secrets We Keep, which I know a little bit about, uh, Rumi Rapace and um, Joel Kinnaman, and it's, that's probably the most interesting movie second most interesting movie that's opening this week and um, we've got a review of that coming so I'll be interested in seeing that um, there's another movie called Alone which has a really good rating um, but I don't know anything about it the way I see it is a documentary but it's gotten really good reviews too and it's opening here so that's going to be great uh, The Infidel or Infidel uh, yeah I'd really like to see that so <laughs> just to let you know if there is no review of in infidel in the day's paper it's not our fault it's not because we didn't want to review the christian jim caviezel movie we wanted to really badly and we made a lot of efforts to do that and for whatever reason and they don't have to. I mean, it's not like they are obligated to show us their movies. They don't have to do that. You know, that's fine. That's part of, you know, however you want to get by in life. If you don't want, you know, a certain critic to read your book, well, don't sell it. Don't send him a review copy. You can go buy a ticket. You know, that's the way I look at it, you know. So, you know, and I'm not that interested in Infidel that I'll probably go back and write about it after it's open, but, you know. Uh, usually, they usually they would be looking for publicity, but in this case, I don't know what they're doing. But the best movie maybe this week is, and I don't know much about it, but it's just, um, I, and I got a screener for it, and I haven't watched it just because of it's a factor of time, and I promised it to someone else to re Dan Liebarger is reviewing it, so it's the Nest. It's um, Jude Law and Carrie Coon, who are two actors who I think are very interesting, who've done some really good work on on HBO these last few years at least and um, that's going to be our lead movie today that's going to be the one that kicks off the section which is a really kind of middleweight movie <laughs> but for this time of year even if we weren't in a pandemic that would be what we're getting because we're getting ready to have these sort of floodgates open after um, after Toronto and even though the pandemic seems to be still here with us and maybe it will be here with us always, though um, some people think we'll have a vaccine sooner rather than later. I don't, I'm don't. i a little bit dubious about that. Um, I did just get my flu shot this morning, though, so, so do that. If you're on the borderline about getting it, get it. Get it for everybody else, you know. I mean, uh, flu shots are nothing. Um, so... We're about to get into the, a real kind of awards sort of season, and there's a lot of good movies that appear to be coming out of Toronto. And I told you the Toronto story last week. Piers has been uh, monitoring that for us, and he's probably going to see more movies uh, than he would otherwise uh, since we're doing it virtually, but I don't know. We'll have to see. I think he's going to have a report from Toronto for us this week. It would be a lot easier if I wasn't doing this quite so early. I'm doing it a little early for reasons you don't need to really know, except that it's technical stuff and the way my schedule's arranged. <laughs> yeah, and Paris has left. We have totally bored her. But, okay, so we have a whole bunch of movies opening. Not anything like Tenet, not anything like the James Bond movie. Uh, I'm wearing my James Bond uh, watch. If you can see this, this is my this is the Omega that he wore or Omega Omega is the way they pronounce it in Britain and it sounds sort of affected to me 
though I just did it. Um, but this is from Spectre. This is a 2015 movie watch. Yeah. It doesn't blow up or anything, but you know, it's it's cool looking. Um, but you know, we don't have a James Bond. We don't have a, a Tenant opening this week. But we do have like some good, you know, the kind of movie that would normally open around September, you know, 18th. Uh, is opening this week so um, if you've gone back to the movies and if you're going back to the movies you have these options if you're not if you're not ready to do that yet well there'll be more stuff these things will be on VOD quicker they'll cycle out quicker now than they did before I think some of them are probably going to open you know and you can read this in the paper I don't need to remember it you can read it in our little box we'll tell you if it's going to open theatrically if it's going to open theatrically and on you know streaming services or whatever like that so you know you don't have to have me remember stuff because I'm not good at that anyway um, what else have we got well um, I was talking about going back to the theaters where Courtney Lanning went back to the theater and she talks about that experience in her platform diving column, which is supposed to be about, you know, different platforms. So I guess theatrical is actually a platform, too. So, OK, we can <laughs> really you just find you come up with a rubric and then you give it to a writer you like and you let the writer run with it. OK, and so that's what she's doing. And uh, what is uh, Dan's got a couple reviews for us. He's got the the uh, Kevin Wilmot interview for his movie The Twenty Fourth, which is available to stream now. I was hoping that would come out theatrically here, but apparently it's not. So you know, go find it on wherever you can find it. Uh, not that hard. Just Google it, uh, and then I'll tell you where you can see it. And which is interesting. It's like everybody's talking about Yellowstone. Uh, the Kevin Costner thing, and I went looking for that, and I have a full array of stuff. I mean, it's professional, so it's it's not you know, it's not like I'm you know just the average guy. I don't pay for a lot of this stuff, is what I'm saying. But you know, I've got like Netflix, I've got Hulu, I got HBO, I got Showtime, I've got Sundance Now, which I don't think I need because I think Sundance Now is actually on Hulu. I've got Acorn, and I've got Disney Plus, and I've got. You know, I got everything. Yeah, you know, Apple, Apple TV too. You know, not which I used to be my main thing. I don't, you know, but so got all these things, and I can't find Yellowstone on any of them. And I read that it's on this Paramount Network, and all these people have Paramount Network. Really? I think what they do is they buy it. You know, I think you can buy it uh, through um, Amazon Prime, which I also have, <laughs> or. Uh, Apple TV and you can watch it that way so maybe that's the way everybody's watching Yellowstone but anyway if there's another way to watch Yellowstone if there's some service that I have and I'm just not finding it on there let me know but I don't have any opinion about Yellowstone though you know, I, here here it's good that's all I'm also looking for stuff to, to watch on TV now and it's sort of like we've run through so much uh, so much good stuff and then there's stuff I don't really care for you know I don't really care for Lovecraft County which is really well done but it's just not my sort of aesthetic I guess that's the HBO show Jordan Peele is doing and um, you know nothing right now on Netflix that's really grabbed me either I'm watching the show Riviera which is really trashy on Sundance now and uh, I'm still watching those uh, Swedish and <laughs> Danish shows when they pop up. <laughs> I'm getting really kind of into this sort of Scandi, you know, drama, uh, Scandi noir sort of sort of thing. And someday I'm going to write about that. So anyway, other news: uh, my class kicks off on Friday. So if you are a mind to, I think you can still sign up at Life Quest of Arkansas. I still don't know the first movie I'm showing. I still don't know exactly how I'm going to work this Zoom stuff, but we are going to have a class and I am going to share my screen, show movies, and then we'll talk about it. So if you'd like to join me for that, it's going to be Fridays at 9 a.m. That's when the movie starts and we'll talk about it afterwards. Then I'll go on the radio <laughs> and then I'll have Friday afternoon basically to do other stuff so okay that's that's the way we are and uh, that's uh, 
about 20 minutes so uh, that's good enough for this we will um, see you in the newspaper and take care be safe courage